This is the Generation 3 Ford Raptor. And today I'm gonna go over its key features and what makes this truly a super truck. And so many people want one of these and why. What's up guys? Welcome back to TorqueWorks YouTube channel. Uh, we're out here today in the Blue Ridge Mountains and I thought what better day, this bright, warm, not really, it's not warm at all, it's 34 degrees, uh, but sunny day to do a review on our new Gen 3 Ford Raptor. Now, I introduced this to you uh, a week ago on the channel. We're gonna go over its key features not super in depth because there is a lot going on in this truck um, but i'm going to show you guys around and figure out why this truck is sought after by so many people even during the pandemic when prices on vehicles are higher than well i don't know probably ever have been in history also just so you know the birds that are out here uh, in the forest are not happy that i'm here so if you hear them i apologize for them they're not going to apologize for themselves so let's take a look at this raptor Generation 3 Ford Raptor. This one is riding on the 35s and it does have the beadlock capable wheels already installed. That is a factory option. Uh, that is not standard. Uh, this truck does have the 801A high package. If you're familiar with the Generation 2, that will be the 802A package, I believe, uh, which includes a lot of stuff we'll dive into here in just a moment. Just wanted you guys to kind of take a look around the outside, see what we got working here. Looks good. Now this is in the lead foot gray color. Now this color, very popular color, but it is no longer offered on the F-150 Raptor. Now with this one, Rocking the 35s, uh, they're BFG KO2 all-terrain tires there. Now you can also get the Gen 2 Raptor with a 37 inch uh, package, which are only on the 37 package, uh, unless you buy them aftermarket. This one, like I said just a moment ago, only 35s. But I mean, guys, it's not only, it's 35 inch tires on this thing. Moving around the front here, in true Raptor fashion, you have your LED marker lights for the side. Rigid Industries, the first time ever, LED uh, fog lights here. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more about this in just a moment. You, of course, have your LED high and low beam projectors lamps. Of course, surround marker lights. You have your three amber lights and the same on the other side. You definitely don't know what this is unless you can see this in your rear view mirror. And believe me, everyone knows what this truck is when they see that. You still have your tow hooks and your bash plate underneath. And Ford's not gonna let you forget what you're driving. It's a Raptor. It's a Raptor. And even on the hood, it is definitely a Raptor, guys. Now this is a functional hood scoop. And these here have been redesigned as well. Side vents are also functional. Now, one of the features with this new generation, obviously it's been redesigned. The grill is a little more massive. You don't have this protrude into the headlights anymore. It's kind of its own assembly. And of course you have the real nice black surround, things like that. Yes, LED markers have changed. These are much, much nicer. Uh, the small ones, I know on my 2020 generation two, uh, the LED marker lights on the side, they actually got a lot of condensation in them. I haven't noticed that at all in this truck. Um, I only have 800 miles on it, I'm still new, but for now, these are good. But anyway, the Rigid Industries lights, so you have these fogs, um, which you can turn on from inside on a selector dial, uh, which I'll show you in a moment, but you have these with the Raptor cover on them. A lot of people were concerned, well, you said there were two, where are they? They're actually behind here. So they don't really tell you about it. I guess they thought the lights were just too bright, but they give you a cover from the factory. It's already covered up, but these you can turn on. They consider them your off-road 
lights, you can turn this on from the auxiliary switches that are above. Another thing they changed on the Gen 3 Raptor is they redesigned the mirrors. Now, it's not only redesigned, it's also been lowered and re-engineered a little bit, probably for aerodynamics, but also from view within the cockpit. Now within these mirrors, you still have your lights for your 360 lighting and your side spot. You also have cameras, which is part of your 360 camera package on this 801A. Now, one thing that I think is a key feature to this truck and many, many full-size trucks, because they are much higher off the ground than they probably ever have been, especially from the factory with 35s and also an option 37s on this, um, you're looking at more than 12 inches of ground clearance on this beast, which means a very, very high step into the vehicle. So Ford puts you these nice side steps here, or boards, if you will, and it has a textured grip to it, which I really like. They're very durable, but it also serves from protection from throwing rocks and gravel up from the tire, and it usually will hit this before it hits the side of your truck. So I'm gonna take you to the back of the truck, the business end, if you will. I'll show you one of the key features of this new model. And I'm gonna do that right here from the key fob itself. So you have your, your camera here. You also have your light here for 360 lighting and convenience. A button under here, it's a push button. And this tailgate will actually lower itself. It's dampened and assisted from the button or from the key. So you press this twice. If I have it unlocked, it'll lower. And there we go. So it will lower itself. This one is equipped with the work surface. You could do all sorts of things here. I think in the videos from Ford, a lot of times they'll have a construction worker um, putting wood here with clamps and measuring and cutting. I've always used these tailgates on any truck since as long as I've been able to drive for things like that anyway. It's really nice to see Ford do something like that. So another thing I like about this one, it's equipped with also the step, which a lot of you have seen, some may not. So I just wanna kinda of show you this. It's very, very simple. It's assisted. You just step here and then you can hold onto this and step right up into here. This also doubles as a seat. Most people don't use it like that, but my kids do and they love it. All right, so another thing I wanted to look at here in the tailgate area and the truck bed area, this one is lined and this has the Ford Tough Bed lining. It also has the LED package for bed lights. Comes with the cleats, okay, which I have installed and they're lockable. I really like those. Uh, you can find similar things on the Ranger as well. Now this one does have the two kilowatt inverter. They call it power on board. Very, very cool. Two kilowatts is a lot, guys. It'll run a lot of stuff on a campsite. Definitely a lot at like a little tailgate party or things like that. Really, really cool addition. I'm glad I added it to this truck. So the other thing that I wanted to show you with this bed, which <laughs> is kind of silly, but I've really grown to love it is just like I showed you to lower it. This sucker will raise itself. Okay, man, what a time to be alive. All right. So in the back end, you still have your dual exhaust tow package hooks. If you need to be towed out or pull someone else out. Now, cool thing about this exhaust um, if you guys don't know, Gen 3, they also redesigned the exhaust, okay? And I'll play a clip of how it sounds here in just a moment with a cold start and maybe a few short revs. Uh, but they call this the trombone exhaust. I kind of get why, they, why they, they did it. I'm going to throw a picture up. Take a look at this. Okay, so this is what it looks like. The, the little O pattern, and then it runs into the muffler with like a X cross and all the, it's, it is funky looking, okay? But we're not getting under the vehicle to stare at it all the time. It's functional, it's well-designed, and it actually sounds really good. 
compared to my 2020, this, this sounds amazing. So let's listen to it and see what you think. All right, so what did you guys think of that? I think it sounds pretty good. Okay, let's keep taking a look here. So underneath these massive tires, you still have even larger, but you still have the Fox live valve suspension front and back, of course, and this will manipulate the characteristics and the algorithm of the suspension, uh, how it dampens, hardness, softness, everything, many, many times a second. Um, it's too smart for me. Uh, too smart for most people uh, and I'm glad because it, it rides so great now you can kind of see some of the link suspension here this gen 3 Raptor is one of the only f-150s you can get with the five link rear suspension with coil suspension no more of the leaf springs okay and boy I definitely notice a difference I think contact to the ground is better for sure the ride is great in the back, you still have the sliding rear window, at least on this option, uh, Raptor. Your LED bed light, but you also have camera there if you notice, which I'll show you in a minute from inside on the infotainment screen. You can view the bed of the truck even when you're going down the road. Super cool. All right, guys, I think it's time to move inside the truck. Uh, smart key system is uh, on this truck, so I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the handle and let's jump in. A few things before we jump in, uh, let's take a look at this interior just a little bit from the door itself and how different it is from the generation two. So gone are the normal black, whatever plastics that were here, uh, even on my, uh, 2020, uh, look at this. I don't know if it's going to pick it up on the camera 4k or not, but this is almost, it, it has a look of denim, like denim jeans. Um, it's kind of, I, I don't know. They, they've textured it well. It is soft touch. They've textured it well, but it looks really cool. Very rugged. And I really like that. So you still have a leather material here that is also soft touch. Nice stitching. Um, this has been redesigned. You still have the same grab handle for opening the door. Uh, buttons are very similar, uh, but it's just laid out really nice. Um, it's not as glossy as it was before. You don't have to worry about scratches. Now this package, I do have the carbon fiber package and you can see the weave and the carbon fiber is also changed. It looks very nice. Bang & Olufsen sound system. Nice brushed stainless steel covers. That's really cool touch. It really just does something with a hint of, of that color in here. And then your pockets and things like that all still here laid out really well. Very useful. And Ford Performance, which you will see that a little more in a moment. And we can't forget that we are in a Raptor, guys. America. You, they have brought this. Sorry, I cracked my own self. But they brought the same brushed stainless steel texture throughout. Okay, this is not. It is faux. It is like a plastic material, but it looks nice. Um, nice transition from smooth to texture. Now you do on the dash also still have that soft touch material that is very denim looking. <laughs> I really like it. It actually hides dust with the little speckled multicolor here. So this does have the black leather seats. One of the main reasons I chose the 35 package um, was with the black leather uh, with the side inlays here will bolster you in and keep you from sliding around too much in the truck at, at high speeds or, or some serious off-roading. Uh, but the other one, the 37 package that I mentioned a few times, it also comes with blue Alcantara um, Recaro seats. They're very cool but they are and very supportive, but they're not as soft as these. These still have plenty of bolstering to hold you and they are very supportive, but they're still soft enough that it makes the ride, especially on longer road trips, very enjoyable in this truck. As you can see, we have the twin panel panoramic sunroof here. I have the shade back so you guys can see and we'll get some nice lighting in here. And now let's hop in.
All right, inside the new Gen 3 Ford Raptor, very similar setup, but a lot of things have changed, okay? Let's take a quick look. Pan around and let you see it. First thing you may notice, the center stack has really, really changed here for infotainment. You see all the buttons along the top. You still have your Bang & Olufsen marker up there with a center channel. But look at this massive screen. This is 12 inches, okay? And here, you also have another digital 12-inch screen. Very, very cool. Over here on the dash, more carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. N no carpet flyers here, guys. Just carbon fiber. Okay. <laughs> Shifter has changed. Lots changed. Have a glove box over here with the carbon fiber. Very cool glove box there. It's lockable. It's also large. I love that. Always, always need extra storage. You see more of the speakers. This thing has, oh my goodness, I think 18 speakers in this thing. It's insane. Even in the back of the headrests, you have speakers. This is one of the quirks of this truck, though, with all these speakers, like the ones in the headrests and the one up here, unless you're listening to some kind of spatial audio uh, or surround sound at a certain level and certain quality of, of sound, you're not even going to hear anything out of these really at all. But it helps with ambient noises and, and just the fullness of surround sound. So it, it sounds amazing. Don't get me wrong. But it's just kind of a weird quirk. So I'm going to go ahead and start this boy up and let you guys see the gauges. Now, you see everything move towards me. The steering wheel is moving. Uh, my seating position is moving back to where I had it. It does have memory seats. Uh, but as you can see, nice, beautiful, high-quality digital gauge there. Really, really like that. I've been enjoying it a lot. But it looks great. It doesn't give me any eye strain. It's just easy to glance. And there's lots and lots of things that you can adjust on it. Uh, real quickly, I'll show you. Uh, you can look at Raptor view information. Um, all sorts of things on here. You can switch and customize. Uh, so with this truck, you also have electronic parking brake. I really like these. Um, gone is the day of pulling up the lever or smashing your foot to the floor over here to engage that. Um, I've always put on a parking brake, even when not parking on a hill, just because I don't like my trucks and cars to roll and, uh, and catch themselves on the transmission to stop. So you have <clears throat> automatic lights, automatic high beams, automatic everything. I'm not going to go over all this with you guys. You also have a button for the, the tailgate in the back, which I showed you a moment ago with the key. You can hold that down uh, when parked and lower that and raise it. This is for your lights on the mirrors and so on. Lots and lots of stuff. <clears throat> All right, over on the right of the steering wheel, you have the push button start. Ford's Pro Trailer Backup System. Look at this beautiful infotainment screen. It is absolutely huge. I love it. It's pretty quick. There's lots of stuff on it that I have not messed with, which is fine. There's just so many things. Lots of the settings. I'm going to make a video for you guys on a lot of these settings and how to get to them because there's a lot of customization within this system, but for the vehicle itself, including a lot of its key features like driver assistance and your power onboard. Now, infotainment with this, you also have some other cool features like wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, uh, and I believe Alexa support. I really enjoy, I have an iPhone, so I really enjoy the wireless Apple CarPlay because down here under this carbon fiber cover, you actually have a wireless charging pad and an area down here um, with a, a phone holder. Actually, I have it removed right now, um, which is really nifty. All soft touch rubbery material, so it's not going to scratch anything up. You have USB-C connector, standard USB for charging. This works even with a case on it, which I like. And not having to have the cable plugged in for Apple CarPlay, man, that's just really been a lifesaver. Nice large buttons, which have digital readout displays in them. Really love that touch. That's really nice. Toggle switches. How cool. You just got to love a toggle switch. I mean, that's just neat, man. So you have all your radio controls down here. Your awesome toggle switch for the high back system. Heated and cooled seats, not just ventilated. These are actually AC cooled seats. Heated steering wheel, trailer brake controller. 
And then moving up top, I'll show you these, which you've seen in the last generation, your auxiliary toggle switches. Now, I mentioned to you outside that the other covered up light, the fog light that Ford put in, um, it is functional. It is already connected, but I could not figure it out for the life of me when I hit the fog light switch on the side over here of the steering wheel. Well, one set came on, but not the other. That's because they have them wired separately. It is this switch here, aux one, and those will come on. Now coming back down to the, the cockpit area, Raptor, can't forget you're in Raptor guys. And you do have your metal magnesium uh, paddle shifters. Can't forget that, that's really cool in manual mode, which you can set by pressing the M button uh, once you're in drive. Now, another cool thing, quirk to many, cool feature, um, I actually, I'm going to get some use out of it. I made fun of it for a long time, but I'm going to get some use out of it. This new lever is smaller. looks a lot different than the Gen 2. It is very reminiscent of an actual fighter jet, which this truck, they say, is what they kind of you know, patterned it and designed it after the uh, Raptor fighter jet. So very reminiscent of what you'd find in the cockpit of one of those. So cool thing, the button here, as you can see, I will press this gets rid of it for you now why in the world would you want to do that well i'll show you right now because the center armrest if you pick it up from the back there is a button and you have a fold flat surface that's actually very large it's almost two feet long here or maybe a little bit more no, i'm not going to get out my ruler anyway uh it is very nice it is plastic here leather on the top but it doesn't move much. I mean, it's very, very sturdy. I like the hinges that they put on it. Um, it's perfect for a laptop to sit here this way or, or diagonal, whatever. And you can work actually really nicely. Share a steak dinner or something here. I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think about it? So close that up on this side, which is lockable. You actually pull this up and you have the cavernous center console area comes with this little tray, which doesn't let stuff move around. You also have some connectors for charging down there as well. It's very deep. You can put lots of stuff in here. I put iPads. I put a small uh, MacBook Air in there, things like that. You see I have some little goodies in there. Um, flashlight. Can't leave home without a flashlight, guys. Am I the only one that loves flashlights? I swear I have a million flashlights. Cup holders, they are illuminated. A little tray uh, for a phone or whatever um i put my small wallet in there sometimes so more cool stuff plug i believe that is 400 watt um i could be wrong i'd probably only use 200 just to be safe of course you have your 12 volt and up here like i was telling you a moment ago and look at these buttons here where you have your flashers traction control and this is your off-road basically cruise control um uh, Toyota has something similar to this too. Uh, it works really well. I just don't use it. I like to be in control of the vehicle. So up here with this, with the camera button, is the other really cool feature. I'm not going to call it a quirk at all. This is a cool feature. So even when driving down the road, which I do not suggest to take your eyes off the road, but you can still use it, you can press the camera button. Now you'll see the 360 degree cameras that are installed on this truck with this package you can see behind me but if you look at the other options here for parking assist and things like that which are selectable here these little lines here if you press this you get more options for camera and remember i told you in the third brake light that had a camera so even going down the road you can see in the bed of your truck super cool you can check to see if things are still tied down i i know i carry things strapped down a lot and i'm very ocd about strapping them down correctly because i don't want to injure anyone or lose my cargo but here you can kind of take a peek and see if anything's up uh you can also check to see if your tailgate has been lowered and raised you know just in case you forget so let's jump out we're actually going to take a look in the back of the truck spin around there for you another very important part you see everything's carried over same material same design soft touch really elegant uh and sporty at the same time 
So this little square peg, <laughs> this is actually a cup holder slash whatever you want to put in it. My kids told me it's a cup holder for them, so that's what it is. Back of the seats, you got map pockets, iPad holders, games, all the same stuff. You see in the back here, you have more cup holders for the kiddos, vents, heated seats, even more connections, 12 volt. You also have, get it open here, USB-C, USB, and you have another home style port there to plug in laptops and things like that. So in the center, you have drop down armrest, leather seats, like I said over here, they're heated and, and they look the same. I love that. I love the bolstering. Everything is the same. Um, not as much bolstering here to hold you, but it still has some, the same look. So it carries on throughout the vehicle. But I want to show you something really cool about this Ford Raptor uh, that I really, really like. This folds up, and then down there you got my equipment, you just have to ignore that. So this is pretty much a fold up and a flat loading surface here. So fold up, it locks into place, and a, a, a flat surface here. Hardly any hump at all, except for this little bitty one here. And I was like, you know, what is this? Because my last one didn't have that. Well, I'll show you. So here you have the switch. If you push that switch to the unlock, position okay this is cool you gotta you gotta watch this this folds up if i can get the seat over there out of the way these lock into place you have this little lever here you pull up which will lock this from collapsing and then the, you have this huge area to store i mean that is huge it's almost one foot deep at this portion there's a little bit less on this one because the seat goes that way but that's not all so just wait we're gonna fold the seat back down, okay? Right here on the side, there is a lock. I was like, what the heck is this for? You stick your key, your valet key, or the key that is inside of the fob here. You just hold the button down and pull this out. You stick the key in here, turn it, it locks it, and what it does, it locks a rod through the seat. You cannot lift these seats up. So if you have things under here, it's actually a lockable storage. The other thing I know you're noticing here underneath, along with the subwoofer and speaker and, and amps and all the things, this is not your amp. This is actually the huge piece of equipment that is installed on this one because I have pro power on board. It helps cool the system through here. You'll hear the fan running sometimes when you're in the truck at idle. Uh, but this gives it up to the 2,000 watts of power that it has in the back. Moving around to the other side here, of course, all the same stuff. Child safety locks, I don't go over this very much. This one does have child safety locks. I still like that they do this on vehicles. Sometimes, not all of them do. All right, so the seat over here, the 6040. So this one does come up as well, where you can access that storage compartment, your other goodies under there. But this one, without installing anything else, you can actually pull this one forward if I can get to it. Sorry, one-handed here. Pull that little strap. The seat folds down where you can access the back here. A little bit more storage, but also have all your tools for changing tires. And Ford even still gives you a little funnel there for fluids. Pretty neat little quirk there. So with the Fox Live valve and the 35-inch tires, you have just around 14, maybe a little bit over 14 inches of travel in the back and over 13 inches of travel in the front of this F-150 Raptor. And under the hood, unchanged from last year, so they say, is the 3.5 liter EcoBoost high output engine with 450 horsepower, 510 pound feet of torque, it is a lot to get the job done, okay? This vehicle is just under 6,000 pounds and it will get up and move, I promise you, and I will show you that in just a second. So you have twin turbochargers. Uh, this brings in the air, your air inlet, was really cool. It actually comes through here directly into these for nice cold air. This is all sectioned off here with rubber once the hood is closed so it all filters right into here and into your air box there uh 
not a lot has changed under here, as you can see. Um, I think they've done a better job in tuning, uh, Ford has. You also have a new cooler right here. Um, you got a nice make it look pretty cover there under the hood. Uh, I think that kind of deadens some of the noise too from the port and direct fuel injectors on this one. Sound familiar? Maybe uh, from the new Tundra, uh, maybe also from the Tacoma. Um, it does have direct and port fuel injection. Uh, really cool. Another thing I like on mine, now this is, I noticed different from my last one, is underneath the hood is almost a flat black, almost kind of a satin black. And then of course you've got your cover here, um, your air coming in from that nice functional hood scoop for cooling and things like that. I don't know if you could see, you can see outside those vents actually do let air blow right on through uh, those vents there on the side as well. Uh, but I do, I think that's a nice touch. So even if it's a white truck, you still have a black underbelly there. It's kind of gives to the whole vibe of, of the satin black underneath the hood. I think it's a really, really cool touch for it. All right, let's hop in, start her up. And I'm gonna give you a quick driving impression. So in this truck, you have a very commanding view of the road. Obviously being a full size truck, you sit up really high. The, the truck is really high off the road anyway. And then your seated position is even higher than that. You're pretty much looking down on most other vehicles, uh, unless they're also in a full size truck. The window placement, placement of the A pillars, B pillars, so on, um, is, is very good. You could see perfectly over the hood, see out no problem. The way that Ford has lowered your side mirrors is really nice. You can see out that you don't have as much of a blind spot anymore at all. I really like that. Of course, I can see no problem out of the back as well. No issues. Now these side windows, they are acoustic windows, acoustic glass, and I believe the windshield is as well, which is a new feature you'll see on a lot of vehicles coming out this year. Now, just because the glass beside me and in front of me and to the right of me is acoustic glass, and just because it's a V6 under the hood, don't get it twisted. You can still hear everything you need to hear inside this Raptor, okay? And as soon as I get out on the main road here, I will show you what I mean. So I have it in sport mode. Um, throttle response is, well, it's a lot lighter, uh, but the response is very fast. Um, it also keeps your turbo spool to an extent, uh, but it keeps your revs, your RPMs up um, higher in every shift point. It also won't allow you to shift, um, at least in automatic drive mode, um, until you get over a certain RPM to the next to the next gear. It really kind of presses that red line limit, and I like that. Uh, it's very snappy. The shift uh, shift points are very snappy, uh, very sporty feeling. Now in normal mode. Uh, it also changes the suspension back to a more plush ride. Um, the throttle response is the lighter, um, or not lighter, I guess. It, it's a little less responsive, a little more eco-friendly. Um, you can still get into it. You can put your, your foot down with it for sure, um, but shift, shifting is very buttery smooth. You almost don't even feel it shift with this 10-speed automatic transmission. So I'm actually going through an orchard uh, area right now with a straightaway here. Um, and with inside noise at a, a minimum, no one else in here with us, let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> this thing just puts a smile on my face every time I drive it. Oh my God. So this is no 911. Uh, it's not a new Corvette. It, it's not a Hellcat that no one ever said it was. This is a 6,000 pound off-road beast. It is a full-size pickup truck that you can work all day with. You can power your work site. You can haul five people very comfortably, very comfortably in luxury while not feeling one single pothole on the road. 
and go almost as absolutely fast as you would ever need to on a public road. Then once you're done with the pavement, you can go just as fast off-road in the sand, jumping it. This thing is built to jump. It is a Baja winning beast. This thing was designed to take a beating and be as absolutely aggressive looking as it is actually aggressive off-road and on. So getting this, no, it is a performance vehicle and it does take performance maintenance, performance goods to make it, it work the way it was intended. So the Gen 3 Ford F-150 Raptor uh, during the pandemic times uh, is extremely hard to find. Um, and like I said, with this one, this is the last of its color. So really it's the last of its kind. The lead foot gray color uh, is extremely popular since its induction on the F-150 lineup. Um, I really hate that they're, they're moving away from it, but it's a beautiful color. I was able to get my hands on one for the channel for you guys, for me and my family. Uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. It looks great in any light. It hides dirt, it hides scratches. Um, a lot of the things that I wanna do with it, um, and because of its size, I can't park it in most garages. Um, I wanted to be able to keep it looking clean, even when I'm not able to get out there and detail it as much as I used to. <laughs> Man, holy cow. So I, I'm not gonna display speeds, but let's just say it goes to infinity and beyond really quick, okay? Holy cow. So right now we're running in, I'll hit the right paddle shifter will actually display the gear that you're currently in. I'm, I just shifted into seventh gear and I'm still running at right around 2000 RPMs because it's in sport mode. Now being in sport mode, it changed the sport suspension. It's very tight. Um, it's not harsh, but it does have the good solid firm ride that you would expect from a sports suspension and that's crazy because of how comfortable it is on and off road what it can do what its capabilities are and it can still hold in the turns uh in sport mode uh, and really give you that race car feel almost um i have had many muscle cars and race cars throughout the years this thing is more powerful faster and more fuel efficient than any of those ever were I know it blows your mind, doesn't it? Uh, 87 IROC Z, I love that car. It had a 350 in it, it got terrible gas mileage. And I thought it was fast as all get out, but I tell you what, this thing would whoop it. I mean, whoop it. Um, I'm averaging with very spirited driving, which is not my norm. I know I'm usually uh, very fuel conscious. I've just been having so much fun with this truck. It wants you to put your foot down. It wants to go. It will putt putt around. It will take you to the mall and back and to Chick-fil-A to get your sandwich. But it it means business. It will it wants to. It craves for you to go. And I love it. For performance, absolutely. Let's do it. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm I'm averaging about 15, 15.2 miles to the gallon. It's not great. Um, that's mostly city around town driving. And like I said, uh, lots of hearing that exhaust. Um, yeah, to do that, you gotta put your foot down. You put your foot down and it eats the gas. So um, when I first got it, I did drive on the highway about 235 miles to get it. I had to go out of state to get this. Um, and I was averaging just under 22 miles per gallon on the highway. So with premium fuel, um, light throttle and just cruising, uh, it does get decent gas mileage for a truck with this much power and this much size. Okay, we're almost to our destination. Um, I wanna do a zero to 60 real quick. Just so you can see my face, not really uh, to time it and be super official. Okay, so let's go. We'll do an official one later. I'm not, I'm not going to pre, let's, let's just do it. Jesus Christ. Okay. And 
there it is. That's 60. That's 60. I gotta let, <laughs> I gotta catch my breath. Uh, it got away from me <laughs> and, and the roads are dry, but it is cold outside. I think it's like just under 50 degrees. Um, that pulled really good. And that was at a little bit of slight incline on the road that I was just on. Um, we'll do official numbers later. Uh, I've got a, a device and draggy, I think will work too, uh, to give us pretty close to, to true numbers. That's fast. That's really, really fast. Um, in the seat of your pants fast, it does it for me for sure. Everything I need right there. Um, you want a Hellcat, go get you one. Uh, you need a supercar, go get that. This is a super truck, bro. And that is without a doubt, no question. So is this truck, uh, I'll end this video here. Is this truck worth the price? As this one's equipped without going into exact numbers, we'll just theoretically say it's around the 80 to $85,000 mark. Okay. We'll just say that. Is it worth it? You know, my last one, uh, I think we paid sticker. It was $74,000. Um, so all vehicles have gone up all vehicles and that's due to production costs, materials, logistics, gasoline to get the truck to you. Everything has gone up. Okay. Everything. Um, and that's just inflation, the world, we're not going to go into to finances and economics, but it's, it's what's going on. Okay. In the world, is this truck worth the money? Well, it depends on who you are and what you want it for. Um, if you want a work truck, there are better ones. Um, if you want a comfortable ride around town, go to the store, take your gal out to a dinner truck, there are other ones for that too. If you want a truck that will do everything and you also want the high performance, like say you just want a sports car and you want a truck and you want to be able to haul small loads, you want to be able to pull small boats and jet skis and, and your ATVs up to the 8,000 or so pounds that this one will tow, plus it look amazing hold its value like none other in the Ford lineup. Yeah, this is for you. This is kind of like a Swiss army knife of trucks, but you got to pay to play. So I would love to have paid less for this truck, but am I happy with the truck? Absolutely. It's a fantastic truck. It looks amazing. It has all the performance I need. It still will get good gas mileage. I can get the same mileage as the Toyota Tacoma with a 3.5 liter V6 with none of the goodies. It is half the price, but I get the same fuel economy. I can do everything. It, it looks amazing. It'll work hard. Hopefully will last a long time. I don't know. I just got it. Uh, but yeah, man, it's got all the tech. It's got everything you want and it's still a truck. That That's all I'm speech. I don't know. It, it's worth it to me. So guys down in the comments, tell me what you guys thought. If you made it through the video, thank you so much. Um, and I, you know, some people have got on me about saying how much I appreciate you guys. Why? I do. I appreciate each and every one of my viewers, whether you're a subscriber or not. I'm glad you got something out of it. I'm glad you got to my video. Maybe you'll get to know me, my family, my channel, and our family here at the Torque Works YouTube channel. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed this Generation 3 Ford Raptor. Um, I hope you loved its performance. Um, something that I had to say about it today, the color, the everything, uh, the sound, um, as much as I did, uh, that's why I chose it. So if you have any questions, please down in the comments, uh, feel free to ask, ask the community, ask me. I get back to, I think I'm at like 99% of responding to all of my comments. Um, I'm still a pretty small channel, but that's kind of unheard of. Most people don't even monitor comments. So I really, really encourage that back and forth uh, talk, uh, communication, questions. There is no stupid question. Um, and if I don't know it, guys, and I don't already have a video on it, I'll make one or I'll answer you. I'll email you, whatever you want. So you want to email me here at TorqueWorks. The email address is Torque, T-O-R-Q. I'll put it on the screen here. TorqueWorksStudios at gmail.com. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. 
Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought. Hopefully a thumbs up. And if you haven't, subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit that notification bell so you'll know when I put up new stuff and hopefully a whole bunch more soon. And until next time, you guys take care. Stay safe. See you later.